Uh, welcome to Capital Beat. It's Friday, April 29th. Uh, Capital Beat is a production of the Vermont Press Bureau. I'm Joshua Gorman. This is Bureau Chief Neil Goswami and uh, Orca. And we're going to talk about emails today uh, coming from the Shimon administration, possibly regarding the EB-5 scandal happening up in Jay Peak and Kuberk. We're going to talk about the independent contractor bill. We're going to talk about marijuana. And let's start off with uh, emails. Yeah. So it was on Tuesday this week that the House approved a resolution um, calling for the Attorney General to go ahead and look at these emails that, he, that the Shimon administration had requested to be, be deleted to determine which ones are going to be available to the public. Uh, this is a pretty rare demonstration of tripartisan support. It was yeah, sponsored by right. uh, House Minority Leader Don Turner, by uh, Majority Leader Sarah Copeland Hanses, mm -hmm. and by uh, Pro Progressive Leader Chris Pearson. Uh, yeah. Very, very interesting <laughs> stuff. So right. Neil, you, you've been following what's going on with these emails closer than I am. So what's going on right now? So back on April 1st, the Shumlin administration made a request to the Department of Information and Innovation uh, to delete the emails of five former staff members in the governor's office. Mm -hmm. who have been uh, not employed there for uh, at least three years. And that request was repeated on April 7th or April 8th. Um, and uh, it didn't sit well when word broke that the uh, two developers in the Northeast Kingdom, Ariel Kiros and Bill Stenger, uh, were charged with civil uh, fraud charges. And people began to suspect that perhaps the Shumlin administration was looking to destroy these emails because they contained information or mm -hmm. communication about the EB-5 program. Mm -hmm. um, and, to be, and to be clear, the Shumlin administration has maintained that there's absolutely no, no connection right. between the request right. to they, delete the emails right. and the subsequent um, investigation. Right. The, the, the request, they said, was part of an ongoing effort to archive uh, e emails in the administration and figure out which ones needed to be kept and which ones could be uh, deleted and, and erased permanently. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you fast forward a little bit, there was the, the fraud charges were revealed. People began to suspect that uh, perhaps the administration was looking to hide something. The administration maintains that no, that's not the case. And any EB-5 related correspondence was already preserved because of a litigation hold that the Attorney General issued back in October. Um, so anything related to EB-5 in the JP, Kuberk, Mountain, and Newport development projects was already taken out, preserved, saved for, uh, for the potential case. So um, today, Friday the 29th, we expect the administration uh, to release the first batch of emails that was slated for deletion. Uh, the Vermont Press Bureau put in a records request, and which was subsequently copied by a, a number of other media organizations, and the administration says we'll get the first batch today. I'm told it'll be about 5,500 emails released today that mm -hmm. we will put up on uh, VermontPressBureau.com, mm -hmm. and uh, the public is invited to, to review them and see if there's any uh, anything interesting in there uh, that doesn't look right, smells a little funny, or just uh, if you're really bored over the weekend. and and you want to read some Mon's emails. Um, I suspect there will not be much to, to learn uh, from these emails. Mm -hmm. uh, I think most of them will be pretty routine, mm -hmm. uh, but we thought it best to uh, make the request and, uh, and see what's in there just in case. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll get the first patch today, and as uh, one of the things that the, the Shumlin administration told me was that they have been reviewing these emails all week. Many, many mm -hmm. staffers, six, seven staffers around the mm -hmm. clock uh, to redact privilege and personal information. So uh, we'll, we'll see what they contain beginning uh, probably later this morning or this afternoon. Interesting. Um, you're also paying attention to the revival of a bill that many consider dead, and that's the independent yeah. contractor bill. Right. Um, so I wrote a piece about this a couple of weeks ago. It's kind of, kind of had an interesting uh, path. It came out of the um, House Commerce and Economic Development uh, Committee with the, with the unanimous vote, right. and uh, Schaap requested that it get sent back because he expected there was going to be a fight with the Government Operations Committee. Right. Uh, so the bill was re 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 recommitted, and then it uh, just kind of lost any sort of momentum, and we thought it was done. What's, what's happening with that right now? So yesterday, uh, Republican Kurt Wright of Burlington was prepared to make a motion 
to relieve the House Commerce Committee of the bill, which would in effect send it back to the House floor. Um, the, the House Speaker Shep Smith and uh, the Commerce Committee Chairman Bill Bozzo got word of this plan and opted to uh, make the motion themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, there was some fear, I think, among the Democratic leadership that if a Republican member made the request, it would have been voted down by the Democratic majority, and it would appear as though they were trying to block this bill. Um, so instead, they made it themselves, uh, made the motion themselves, and it will allow the bill to come up for uh, debate on Monday. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, members will get a chance to to debate this bill, to amend this bill. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, it is still dead. Mm -hmm. uh, let's remember that the, the legislature plans to adjourn on Saturday, May 7th. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be debated Monday and Tuesday by the House. Mm -hmm. It'll be noticed in the Senate, and the earliest they would get it would be Wednesday, leaving Wednesday, Thursday, Friday for, that, for the Senate to, uh, to act on it, and that mm -hmm. simply is not going to happen. Um, I spoke to a Rutland Republican Senator Kevin Mullen very briefly this morning, and I said, "Hey, will you look at this bill?" He had a, a, a quick, simple answer of no. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to move this year. But proponents of the bill, including Representative uh, Heidi Sherman of Stowe, believe that simply being able to debate this on the floor sets the tone for next January, and she believes that the House and the Senate should act within the first 60 days to send a bill to the governor's desk. So it's really more about posturing at this point than, mm -hmm. uh, than, it, than it is advancing a bill because it has no hope of passing at this point. Mm -hmm. I see, yeah. very good. Uh, there's also been some interesting developments on marijuana. We've been- Yeah, uh, what's going on with we've that? We've been talking quite a bit about the marijuana bill this year and whether or not the state will move to legalize uh, the drug. On uh, the other day, Senator Sears attached the Senate's version of S-241, the, the yeah. bill to legalize, regulate mm -hmm. uh, marijuana, he attached that to a separate criminal justice bill, or mm -hmm. criminal procedure bill, mm -hmm. and sent it back to the House. So the House will uh, have to deal with that on Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, they can, they have a couple of options. They could concur with it, mm -hmm. which would in effect mean that they agree right. with the Senate's uh, marijuana proposal, which mm -hmm. is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. They could vote to not concur, <coughs> um, Excuse me. in which case mm -hmm. uh, presumably a conference committee would be created and they'd have to try and hash out their differences. Or I believe they can amend it again. The House could change it back to mm -hmm. the original bill and send it back to the Senate again. Mm -hmm. So, you know, either way, this will probably be, this may be the only vote on S-241 that the House takes, mm -hmm. e even though it'll be sort of a proxy vote on this other bill, H-858, uh, mm -hmm. I believe it is. Mm -hmm. So there, the, the House will vote most likely not to concur, but we'll, I, w I would imagine there will be a roll call, so we'll get a sense of where members stand on the marijuana issue, even though it's not really a straight up or down vote on on uh, the, the Senate bill. So, Do you think that's something that House, make, House lawmakers have been looking to avoid, given that they're going into an election season? Absolutely. There are a number of House lawmakers, even those that are uh, sort of in favor of legalizing marijuana, that absolutely do not want to vote on this. Mm -hmm. um, probably a little bit of political cowardice heading into an election year. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think there's plenty of people who are, are hell-bent on getting some kind of vote. And in essence, Senator Sears ensured that there will be mm -hmm. s at least a proxy vote on the marijuana bill this year by attaching it to uh, another piece of uh, legislation. So uh, plenty of people do not want to vote. The governor wants this to come up to a, for a vote. On the, on the House floor. Uh, Matt Simon of the Marijuana Policy Project um, tells me that uh, he is in favor of a vote, even if it's voted down. Mm -hmm. So there's, you know, another week to go. We'll see what happens. Uh, there'll probably be some more maneuvering, but at least we know on Monday there will be some type of vote on this on the House floor. I see. Very, very interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've been following a couple of. Uh, interesting bills too. Yes, uh, yes. Fill us um, in on how you've been spending your week. Well, um, so in addition to the House resol resolution regarding the uh, administration emails, um, yesterday um, House lawmakers gave the preliminary go-ahead to a bill that's intended to enhance protections for DCF workers. Yes. Uh, this bill is uh, coming up in light of the August slaying of DCF worker Lara Sobel, allegedly by Jody Herring, who was just found uh, incompetent to stand trial, by the way. And so what this bill does is that it adds DCF workers to a list of occupations that includes uh, law enforcement, yes. uh, emergency responders, uh, healthcare workers, 
and I'm forgetting the fourth one right off the top of my head. Uh, but at any rate, uh, so for these folks, there are what they call enhanced protections. And so if you assault any of these people, the first time, it's the same as assaulting you or I. It carries a maximum penalty of one year in jail or a thousand dollar fine. However, a second or subsequent after that carries up to, up to 10 years. Um, people who argued against this said, hey, somebody who's really in the throes of rage isn't going to stop and think, hey, I might face an enhanced penalty for right. this. However, there was a feeling that lawmakers needed to do something because uh, the Lara Sobel incident was far from the only incident um, in terms of the violence and threats right. that DCF workers face. So what the House went ahead and did is they kept the language from the Senate bill, that's where it originated, was in Senate Judiciary with, right. uh, with uh, Dick Sears. Um, he's got a lot of high-profile bills this, this, this season. He seems to every now, year. Now, now that we think about yeah. it. Um, so what they did is uh, they went ahead and kept that, um, but they stripped out language that would have criminalized the act of making a threat. Right. However, what they did do in turn was tack on a bill that the House passed in March that criminalizes the act of stalking. And okay. stalking includes the act of making threats. Okay. And so what this, and now that bill passed the House in March and then just landed with a thud over in the Senate. It was referred to Senate Judiciary and uh, as far as I can tell, according to the bill tracker, there was no further action on it after that. Okay. So what's going to happen here is uh, House lawmakers going to vote on this today. There's possibly going to be an amendment from Representative Paul Poirier, who's an independent out of Barry City. And Paul is concerned that the bill as it's written, the enhanced protections are not for all DCF workers, but just for DCF workers who are within the Family Services Division. Uh, uh, Lara Sobel was in the Family Services right. Division. Uh, Poirier would like to see that this bill um, expand the scope to include, say, DCF workers that are also involved in uh, making sure that people pay child support. Mm -hmm. As he says, that those people encounter every bit as much of hostility right. when they're trying to collect money out of uh, people who don't want to, want to pay it as uh, anybody in the Family right. Services Division. So um, as we're talking right now, the, the House has adjourned and they have separated. Uh, uh, Republicans and Democrats are caucusing right now. I'm not sure if it's actually on this topic or not. But I know that they are going to be voting on this today. Okay. And so uh, we'll find out if they're going to include the Poirier Amendment or not. Interesting. Yeah, that's All what right. I have going on for sure. Good deal. Uh, we should also note that uh, the Senate has completed its work on uh, the budget, the tax bill, and the fee bill. Mm -hmm. uh, there have been conference committees uh, appointed by both the House and the Senate and they've begun uh, sort of sitting down and negotiating over final versions for each chamber to consider. So uh, next week looks like it'll be the final week of the, of the session. Mm -hmm. uh, as I mentioned earlier, adjournment slated for probably Saturday, May 7th. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll be back uh, at some point after that to uh, provide a final wrap on the legislative session and uh, see how it leads leads into the uh, election season. All right, that sounds right. great. Thanks for joining us. Uh, you can catch this episode and past episodes on vermontpressbureau.com and orcamedia.net. And uh, if you are interested in reading a bunch of emails from the Shumlin administration, check out uh, vermontpressbureau.com and we'll have them posted there. Thanks again.